All right, in our last video, we talked about that we just modified this interesting, pro uh, interesting, interesting problem. <laughs> Let me get it out. Uh, that we're going to have just a few classrooms, seven classrooms, uh, and we're going to use names instead of numbers. So it really does change the way that we need to address this problem. And so that's the question: How can we do that? All right. So let's kind of get into this thing called parallel arrays. But what we did so far, let me move this up. What we did so far. Um, in our first set of problems is that we, we basically created an array called classroom cookies, right? And we, we created multiple elements within this array. In this case, I had seven. And we identified these elements. We could identify these elements by utilizing the index, correct? And so we basically put, we added up the cookies and zero really represented classroom one, two, three, all the way down to seven. Again, that perfect scenario. So our program was pretty easy. All we needed to do was take the classroom number, subtract one from it. We had our index that pointed to the element in which represented that classroom. All right. This is called a single dimensional array. That's probably one thing we haven't really talked about, the different definitions of arrays. So this one's called single dimensional. There's actually three that actually that you should probably know. One, single dimensional. Two, parallel arrays that we're going to go into now. And the third one's called a multidimensional array. Uh, very rarely used anymore, but it's one that you should probably be aware of also. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the future, okay? And so for the most part, this is considered a single dimensional array, meaning there's just one dimension straight down. This is a single dimensional array. All right, let's introduce ourselves to this thing called parallel arrays. And so what parallel arrays, in a sense, is a, a parallel arrays are a group of arrays. I'm going to say a group of single dimensional arrays. Oh, I got a spell. How did I do? I don't think I did very well. Uh, dimensional arrays, thank God for spell check. Arrays, two or more, it can be as many as you actually need, of the same size. They are the exact same size, meaning they have the exact same number of elements in them. Okay? Each element in each array uh, share at, at, at the same index corresponds to a different characteristic of the same subject of interest. So in this case here, you could have an array called names, array called state, array called city. And so we have Bob, who lives in Kentucky, who lives in the Florence, Kentucky. We could have Sydney, uh, and she lives in Ohio, and she lives in Loveland, Ohio. Okay? And so we could have, this could just keep going on. And basically what this represents, if you go back to your database world, is almost like a row, Okay? a row in a database table. So in a way, this is, it's actually called a structure. Let's get down here. So let's look at a couple other little pieces here, uh, definitions that I pulled for you. In computing, a parallel is a data structure for representing arrays of records. This would be a record, right, or a row. Uh, Bob, in the state he lives in, is in uh, Florence, it's Sydney, Ohio, Loveland. Don't get too confused and correlate this to databases. It's different in databases. There's no normalization or anything of them. It's just basically a bunch of parallel arrays that represents a record, almost in a way, or a, you know, a, uh, the same subject of interest that basically shares the same index. So if I went and found Bob, I could go to the state to know where he lived and go to the city and know what city he lives in in that state. Does that make sense? by utilizing the index for state index zero to represent Kentucky, okay? If I went and found Sydney, okay, I would go do that, all right? So let's look at this last one here I pulled. A parallel array is a structure that contains multiple arrays, okay? You hear this word structure, correct? We're not going to do anything in this class in regards to the term structures, but later on uh, in, in future classes, you'll hear this structure and you'll actually be able to find a structure in your programming. That will be nothing more than, a, could, a, if you especially do a structure array, will that be nothing more than a bunch of parallel arrays, just like this. So kind of keep this in mind when you get to that. You'll get that in your later, more advanced classes, okay? All right, uh, each of these arrays are the same size and the array elements are related to each other. That's the whole key, key. they're related to each other. Does that make sense? Uh, look at it very simplistic. All we're doing is creating arrays that relate to each other, and their relationship is based upon the index in which they share. I hope that makes sense. The cool part about this is that the different arrays can be at different data types. 
So I, I have really strings here, but if I wanted to have something that had a numeric data type, I could, and it could be related to something that has a string da data type and so on. Again, how many of these can you have? You have as many as you want. Uh, it just makes no difference in what you're trying to do. Have I used parallel arrays? Yeah, I use them quite a bit. Uh, if I'm using arrays, it seems like inevitably parallel arrays are there with me. Not all the time, but sometimes, okay? Uh, and But they kind of work. Why are we bringing this up now? Well, that again, that situation that we just talked about in our interesting problem, right, in, in regards to, well, we don't have the, the number on the classroom that corresponds nicely to our index. We're going to use names. And as we talked about, we're going to use names like, uh, uh, we're going to use names like, uh, you know, the seven dwarfs and so on, okay? Anyway, look at this a little bit more. You can maybe go do some research on this out on the internet about trying to find the, the actual name here. However, sometimes when you get to the internet, some of the definitions get a little more complex. These are the simplest ones I could find, or the simplest ones I wanted you to know about right now. And I think this definition right here really says what I'm trying to say, that we're going to have arrays that correspond to each other. So, you know, in other words, this variable is going to correspond to this variable, which is going to correspond to this variable, or relate to each other, I should say. All right, so how do we use them? Well, like everything, there could be many applications for them. I, I can sit back and say, you know, what's cool about showing you tools is that you need to figure out how to apply those tools. There is no one-size-fits-all when it comes to tools and programming. You might uh, come up with some really creative ideas on how to utilize parallel arrays based upon the problem that you're actually doing. All right. I know sometimes everybody wants exactness right now, especially be as beginning programmers, but that's not how it works. The fun part about programming for me is going outside the bounds and understanding the, what's capable in programming, like using arrays, and then using something like that to help us you know, solve problems a little bit more quickly, a little bit more efficiently, and, and so on. Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, there, you're going to find all kinds of different applications for them. But most of the time, that's how big however right there, uh, you will use parallel arrays to find the index, uh, which then allows you to find all the related information in the other arrays. I kind of mentioned that before. And so if we sit back and we look at our cookie problem, we, sit, we look at this and we say, uh, I'm going to, you know, I have my cook, classroom cookies. This is where I'm going to accumulate all my cookies. But I want it to relate to the classroom that it's actually in. So in this case, what we're going to do is populate another array. We're actually going to pre-populate the array with the names, in our case, of um, of the uh, of the seven dwarfs. So we can do Sneezy. Oh my gosh! Now I got to think about all of these. Doc, uh, Happy. I'm not going to put them in any particular order. Dopey. Uh, bum 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 bum. See, help me, help me, help me, help me. Bashful. Thank you. I heard you out there. Bashful. Anybody else sleepy? Maybe somebody said they were sleeping. I just overheard that. Doc, Happy, Sleep. Oh, good old Grumpy. Right. And I'm sure you could all relate to. Many of these, basically allergy seasons, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> go on, all right? So how, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to change our program around. Remember what's going to happen now, right? I'm going to kind of look at this over here, and we sit back, and here is the updated program. So here you go. For people who have no idea who the seven dwarfs are, I created you a picture. They're from Walt Disney. Uh, feel free to look them up. Go watch the movie, whatever. Uh, but so I gave you a picture of the seven dwarfs. There they all are. Dopey, bashful, sneezy, sleepy, happy, grumpy, and doc. See? The things you learn in this class, you should pay more, I believe. Um, and so with this said, what we're going to do, we have a combo box. And what they're going to do is select from the combo box one of these names. What we're going to end up doing in our program, instead of, instead of just saying, okay, they're in classroom one, and we're going to subtract one from it, I'm going to go have to search this array, okay, go search this array, and in doing so, go search this array, go find, so if I, let's just pretend I pick happy. Right, and they, and the person who's in the happy class, happy class, that'd be a great class to be in, right? Uh, would uh, sold five boxes of cookies. We would come down here, find happy. We would then know their corresponding related index, and then we would put or accumulate five right there. Does that make sense? Next time through, we pick that somebody from Sleepy's classroom came in. These would be great classrooms, right? You got the sleepy people, the bashful people, the happy people, 
and the grumpy people. I guess the happy class would probably be the one you really want to teach in, teach into. Um, so anyway, so in this case here, uh, we have the sleepy class. We, so they, they she she selects sleepy from the combo box. Has ten comes in here. Once again, we've accumulate ten. And we would just find that index and then point to that location in this array, okay, to do so. Makes sense? All right. Next time through, so we get another person that's in a happy class. And then they sold 10. So we find happy. We accumulate here just like we did. And now we're up to 15. Does that make sense? So this is parallel arrays. These are related to each other, right? This is the number of cookies that this classroom right here has sold. And that's how we get past that problem of what we're doing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. In the next video, we'll go ahead and apply this to this program over here and make sure you know how to do this. And then you can go ahead and try it yourself.